So, uh, good morning to everybody. I'm going to introduce you to a figure, uh, who, the figure of Carlo de Marchesetti, who played a very important role at the beginning of prehistoric archaeology in the Caputadrie, which is the name we use to indicate uh, the regions of the northeastern part of the Adriatic Sea basically Trieste and his surroundings, but also Istria, the peninsula of Istria. And uh, a figure, uh, a scholar, who left uh, an important legacy to the museums, uh, uh, the museums uh, of Trieste. Um, he was born and uh, spent almost all his life uh, in, uh, in this city, who was part of the House of Austria since uh, 1382 and remained uh, under the Austrian-Hungarian Empire until the First World War. This means that he worked within this context uh, in a territory without boundaries, uh, which on the contrary uh, were set up after the First World War. So we have materials from uh, uh, regions, from uh, areas, uh, which are still now in Italy and uh, uh, are in Slovenia too. The, when he lived uh, uh, at the beginning, actually, of his career, uh, two museums uh, uh, which were quite important for him in a different ways, as we will see, were established. The first one is the National uh, Museum, uh, the, the Museum of Natural History. Uh, which is the actual name of the museum. Uh, it had a different, uh, different names in the past, uh, starting from 1847. Uh, and uh, the Museum of Antiquity. Uh, when they were founded, they were both in the same building, Palazzo Biserini. Then uh, this uh, uh, cohabitation split uh, af afterwards. The first one, the first museum, the Museum of Natural History, was very um, important for him because uh, uh, although he um, was a doctor, he uh, got his degree in medicine uh, at the University of Vienna, he didn't actually um, work as, uh, as a doctor. He had already at that time got uh, quite a good reputation as a botanist uh, and probably for that reason he was appointed in 1876 uh, director of the uh, Civic Museum of uh, Natural History, a position that uh, he kept for almost 40 years. He was a botanist uh, of European level, but not only that, he was also an archaeologist uh, of Euro at European level. We have uh, uh, two volumes published by him in uh, 1893. The first one was devoted uh, to the symmetry of uh, Santa Lucia di Tolmino, Most Nasochi. At that time, when he excavated this, uh, this symmetry, it was uh, under the Austrian Hungarian Empire. Now it is in Slovenia. Ten years later, he published uh, um, a second monograph on the Castellieri Preistorici, which means prehistoric hill forts. We will see later on uh, what they are uh, for, for those who do not yet know it. Uh, as, um, about 100 years later, just uh, um, at the date of the publication, we decided to organize uh, uh, a meeting, a first one in 1993, uh, where then published uh, a book, um, The Proceedings, which contain actually an analysis of the figure of Marchesetti from very different points of view. So also his uh, activities as botanist <coughs> is uh, present in this book. Uh, while 10 years later, um, we dedicated the meeting to the hill forts uh, of uh, the area, the Trieste Karst, Istria, uh, and part of northern Dalmatia. As I said before, um, there was a split between uh, the seats of the museums and after Marchesetti's death, which took place in 1926, the archaeological materials uh, from his investigation were, were moved uh, to the Museum of Antiquity. Uh, I stress the fact that uh, only the archaeological materials were moved because in the Civic Museum of Natural History, 
the paleontological materials, often coming from the same sites, and this is clearly a problem, which usually is uh, overcome by good collaboration between uh, people working in the two museums. But uh, anyway, uh, there is a separation of materials. And uh, a few years later, the archaeological ones uh, um, were uh, exposed in, 14, in 18 uh, showcases. Uh, and uh, 14 of these 18 were at that time dedicated to the symmetry necropolis of uh, Santa Lucia di Tornino. Uh, besides uh, the monographs I mentioned earlier, and besides uh, the almost 100 uh, publications, articles on, uh, on his uh, excavations, but also on his uh, botanical studies, we still have, and that is extremely important, we still have uh, his notebooks, travel diaries, letters and postcards. They are kept mostly in the civic library of uh, Trieste. And they contain uh, a lot of Im important information, a lot of notes, uh, and also a lot of uh, uh, drawings, as you can see. Postcards are also important because uh, they allow us to detect the connection he had uh, uh, during his activities. Uh, just to mention one single uh, very famous archaeologist, <coughs> Schliemann, or for uh, the Italian history, Luigi Figorini, but clearly there are many, many others, <coughs> and uh, we have the possibility of reconstruct, reconstructing this connection through postcards, uh, notes, uh, and to uh, reconstruct also uh, all the sites, the map of the sites, uh, which means also clearly connection with the scholars, um, not only in Italy, in the whole of Europe, uh, but we know that he also traveled in Egypt, India, and so on. And so on. We know uh, through his publications, uh, uh, through his notes, uh, and also through the materials which are still present in the museums. So he worked, uh, um, he excavated different typologies of sites. He excavated caves, uh, not so many, actually, because uh, he was then uh, more interested in hill forts and uh, cemeteries, not only Santa Lucia di Tornino. But he excavated in caves. Uh, what is interesting is that uh, already at that time, at the end of the 19th century, he was able to recognize uh, the stratigraphy uh, in, of the deposits. Uh, this is a copy of one of his uh, uh, manuscripts, uh, <laughs> about uh, Grotta Prehistorica, prehistoric cave or uh, Tomins cave, which is uh, uh, near um, Trieste at uh, San Canziano, Scozian, which is a very interesting uh, um, site because uh, uh, there is a combination of different caves uh, and all around them uh, traces of human uh, presence uh, from uh, the Neolithic up to the Iron Age. Um, as I said, he was able to distinguish uh, different layers. Uh, the quotation says, in fact, that uh, uh, he found uh, different layers uh, of uh, clay, uh, which separated uh, four main uh, um, archaeological layers of ashes and charcoal, which indicate uh, different chronological periods. That remained essentially uh, unpublished, but in any case have, have been already detected through our studies, luckily. And uh, from the same cave in uh, Scotian, there are a quantity of materials which uh, are now under study by a mixed equipe of Slovenian and Italian uh, scholars. Here are some of the hill forts, an example of what a hill fort is, uh, which means uh, uh, wall dry, um, dry wall st uh, uh, stones, <coughs> around uh, the top of uh, small hills, uh, um, where ins with inside uh, uh, remains of pottery, remains uh, of uh, fauna. Unfortunately, uh, the work done by Marchesetti, but not, not only by him, also afterwards, uh, was uh, basically a work of survey <coughs> rather than excavation. So, even uh, um, in the 1980s, 1960s, 1970s, uh, there were only very few uh, hillforts uh, uh, 
quite systematically excavated, and uh, very few out of a hundred and more, which are spread along, um, as I said before, the Trieste Karst and Istria. Why uh, the work of Marchesetti was nevertheless so important? Because uh, as uh, these structures, I, as I said, as I said before, um, dry stone walls, uh, this means that uh, um, with time uh, they gradually disappeared uh, due to uh, climatic changes and uh, damages clearly to these uh, structures. And also uh, must remember that also uh, some stones were used uh, later on for uh, construction, for building. Also in this case we have uh, quite important notebooks with drawings uh, and uh, maps of all these, uh, of these hill forts, which nevertheless uh, have been published partially by Marchesetti himself. And then we come to uh, the, certainly the most important excavations, because they lasted from, uh, uh, for, uh, well, almost 20 years uh, in this site, uh, which is, uh, as you can see, uh, which has a very important strategic position at the confluence of different rivers. Um, in this map, you see uh, the location of the symmetry compared to the location of the settlement. Marchesetti didn't excavate the settlement. Um, the Slovenian colleagues uh, uh, excavated uh, it, uh, some many years later, actually, from the 70s uh, till the present, and uh, finding an almost uh, uh, overlapping of uh, uh, a temporary overlapping, but not a complete overlapping. The symmetry, well, he, he, you can see some of the, well, some of the pictures of his excavations, plus the notebooks. The notebooks are very um, interesting because uh, uh, they contain uh, information about the depth of each, uh, of each grave, uh, the quality, the quantity of the materials of, uh, of each grave, uh, plus, uh, well, miniature, but drawings of all of these materials. Which means that when you are working on, uh, on them, you can be able to identify, even from fragments, uh, the whole pieces. Um, you can imagine 4,500 uh, graves uh, excavated by Marchesetti means a very, a very important, clearly, uh, symmetry for the early Iron Age. The, the symmetry is dated from uh, eight, uh, the, the eighth and uh, the end of the eighth and the fourth century BC. And uh, when in 1983 um, there was an important uh, uh, exhibition which uh, um, attempted to uh, give a, a, renew, a renewed sketch of the situation of prehistory and protohistory in this area. This symmetry clearly occupied uh, uh, quite a huge uh, position in this exhibition. But already before, many studies uh, uh, were devoted to this uh, uh, symmetry, uh, studies on topography, on the topography of, uh, of the um, of the area because uh, um, that was reconstructable due to the notebooks of Marchesetti again because uh, he left uh, notebooks, the diaries uh, you have already seen uh, for each year of his excavations. So we have the possibility of studying uh, the evolution of the area also because contemporary to the studies uh, on chronology and typology on, uh, on topography, there were studies on chronology. Different, um, there were um, different authors proposed different chronologies, but uh, you, as you can see, they are somehow overlapping. Um, a basic uh, step was also the publication of uh, 2,455 other graves uh, excavated not by Marchesetti, by a contemporary. Uh, Josef Zombati, and uh, half of them are also kept in the Civic Museum of Antiquity. Mm, before the exhibition, uh, <coughs> other colleagues, Italian in this case, studied the composition of the cave goods in order to try to recognize uh, differences in sex, 
age, social position. Then these, these studies stopped. Uh, whilst at the same, uh, immediately after, another project uh, started uh, with the um, <coughs> object of publishing, of studying and publishing 1,000 graves, uh, plus uh, a complete systematic revision of the typology of the materials of the whole symmetry, I mean over 6,000 graves. But unfortunately, uh, this project uh, didn't see an end. Uh, that is why, uh, just at the beginning of these years, uh, uh, thanks also to a grant uh, we managed to obtain from uh, the region, uh, a thorough check of the state of all the materials uh, and <coughs> the documentation uh, started uh, with the aim of complete uh, the previous one. And another one has just been launched uh, to analyze the, cre the cremation temperature of the bones uh, through uh, paleoradiological analysis, with, which means with the collaboration of a radiologist, actually, and um, combine the results with chronotypological data in order to see if, uh, sorry, well, we, if uh, and how status and ritual uh, can be connected. So, uh, just to sum up, uh, Carlo Marchesetti had been a very important scholar, as I said at the very beginning, the fact that uh, uh, his notebooks and his materials are still present uh, allow us, and I, I would say compel us, uh, to try to study them uh, in order to let the scientific community know what ex exists uh, from his uh, excavations, and in a way also to value clearly his uh, legacy. Uh, we cannot promise a new exhibition, but I hope uh, to let you know about the results of our project. Thank you very much.